All right, for those of you that are collectors, you're probably going to be do doing some drooling today because we have a long out of production American puck lock in the original box. Just very cool. This is a loner lock from Legal Lock Picker. He did mention that it's probably going to be pretty difficult to pick. Let me grab all this stuff out of there. I'm trying to not to damage that box because that's part of the collector's uh, interest. Here's what the keys look like on this guy. So again, this is a six pin lock. American hasn't been doing that for a while. I don't know exactly when they stopped making these, but six pins been quite a while. The difference on this one between a normal puck lock is this one seems to have the key on the front. Most of them have it on the bottom, but where the key is normally positioned, they have the plunger that allows it to unlock. So it actually comes out from the lock. Let's try it. So it does work perfectly. I did try it earlier. And when you turn it, the little plunger spring loads and then you can see how it locks on the inside of it. So it doesn't rotate. It shoots out of the side. Much more intricate uh, assembly. You got a bunch of screws holding the back plate on, which I guess keep all the guts in there. So very cool. Um, one more thing. I did look inside of here. When you, you know, put the light on it, it might be hard to see through the camera. But that first pin, you can see that it's serrated. So we probably got six serrated pins, both key pins and driver pins, it looks like. And it's also slightly, it's like silver colored. So in some of the really old American locks, they use steel pins. So we've at least got one steel pin in this guy. Another thing, when you take a look at this, trying to figure out the age, this is stainless steel, probably one of the first stainless steel. It was turned pretty fast, but in the early days, they were having trouble figuring out how not how to machine stainless steel without galling it. And you see that pretty rough machining on this. I mean, it doesn't matter, it's a lock, but just interesting to see part of the history. Anyway, stop flapping your lips. All right, let me go ahead and find a tensioner. Let's get a pick. Let's see if we can't pick this whole thing open. All right, I'm gonna use this guy. I'm gonna use the long end because it's recessed a little bit. And if I tried to use a short one, I'd have to hold it kind of cockeyed like that. But I will use the long end. That's why they put it there. And I can tell you, look at that floppiness in there. And there's that core's moving around a lot. All right, here we go. I'm going to use the rat yoke because it's a wide open keyway and I need a medium hook. And he's 15,000, so this is a thin one. So all the way in, apply just very slight. I'm doing very little pressure. I'm basically holding the tension wrench and then just adding just the tiniest amount. And find what we got. There's six. Got a click on him. Okay, nobody else. They're all still free. So let's go back to six. Give them another little click. Then check everybody. Still springy. Let's go back to six. Give them another click. Come on, where are you? There you are. Tiny click. Okay, that was three, one click. So we know we're dealing with serrated. So it's like picking a combination. You just give it a single click and move on to somebody else. And if nothing else clicks, go back and give a second one. There we go, that was three again. Oh, that was two. That was one. I have no fault set, so we probably got all serrated here. That was three. That was one. Five. Three. I think six is good. Oh, we do have a fault set. It just fell into fault set. So we have at least one spool. Let's find him. He's hung up in the shear line. So let's find him and squeeze him through there. I'm looking for counter rotation. And I'm not feeling it. Look again. There 
Here it is. Last pin six. So I thought we had him, but apparently not. Come on. All right, now we got him. And now, is that an open? Yes, it is. I will take it. I got to tell you, I'm looking for Asa Abloy stamped on this somewhere. This is about the toughest American lock I have ever picked. There's a lot of a lot of resistance in this guy for just a six pinner. All right, let's open him up. Let's take a look. Um, move all this stuff out of here. We're going to need a key. Move all that. Be careful with that box. And get him up here. And I will need one of these two guys. All right. It's always, yeah, always my last choice. <laughs> okay. I never guess right the first time. Why is that? Uh, a little Loctite on these. Yep, a little Loctite. Try not to strip out the heads. All right, this is when all the snakes jump out. Okay, so we don't need that. Let's get those screws out of there. Just move them over here out of the way. All right, again, the mechanism on these, on these early ones is quite different. You see there's an awful lot of machine work that had to go in these early versions, and they got away from that in the newer ones. Uh, Spring-loaded locking bar here. And let me grab a pair of tweezers so I can keep my fingers out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. This is the actuator. It looks like it's machined. Whoa. Well, that was the spring. We'll find him. And the actuator fits on the back of what looks like a kind of normal American core. That's bothersome. Lost that. Oh, there it is. I, can, I see the spring laying on the floor. This guy pops out. Awful lot of moving parts here. This is the part we want to look at. And it looks like some kind of plastic adapter sleeve. Put that back in there. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. Get him out of there. All right, it is a normal, at this point, we're looking at a normal American core. Other than the gut. So let's take a look. Let's pop him off. Okay, let's find the key. Find a follower. Try that guy. And look at that. You don't see that very often. All cylinders populated, all six with what appear to be all steel pins. Why don't they do it like that anymore? And look how perfectly flush that, I mean, that is, it's like they were machined in there. I mean, they, there's no gaps or anything. They really did a great job. All right, so let's start dumping here. Serrated, 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 serrated. All serrated, every single one of them. All right, it is not a challenge lock. There's no modification on this. I was starting to get suspicious there early on because it was kind of putting up more of a fight than I thought an American padlock should. All right, we have a steel, uh, a, uh, a steel serrated spool, double serrations on both ends. That is what you want to see in a lock. And another one. And another one. Now I see why we were having so much trouble with this guy. And another one. I bet they're all serrated. Let's go on the other side. So pin six. Yep. And there we go, another one. All six of those guys. Looks like factory pinning too, guys. All the springs are identical. Nice, shiny, bright. Take a look at these guys. I wish they still made these. These are excellent pins. And as you can see, they put up an awful lot of resistance. American, you guys are master now. Oh, that explains it. 
master took over. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Legal lockpicker, thank you, sir, for loaning me this piece of history. I have never seen one of these before. Now, let's see if I can find that spring and put it back together and get it back to you. Thanks, guys.